The Southern Theater Command of the People's Liberation Army of China announced that they conducted a joint air and sea combat patrol in the South China Sea on April 7, the same day the Philippines, U.S., Japan and Australia held joint drills in the area. China's military activities intended to sabotage the situation and create hot spots in the waters were unsuccessful. The Philippine Armed Forces of the Philippines notice two Chinese People's Liberation Army Navy ships in the distance, where the Philippines and the U.S. allies six warships and four aircrafts conducted joint maritime drills with Japan and Australia. In an interview with reporters, Armed Forces of the Philippines Chief General Romeo Bronner Jr. said, while they were aware of China's conduct of its combat patrols in the South China Sea, he said they did not see such activity in the area where the multilateral maritime cooperative activity was held. Uh, we noticed the presence of two uh, PLA Navy uh, ships no? uh, in the distance. Pero wala naman pong ginawa itong mga Navy ships na ito para uh, i-block or hadlangan yung uh, ginagawa nating mga exercises. So, tuloy-tuloy naman, naging tuloy-tuloy, uh, naging successful yung ating uh, multinational maritime cooperative activity. The two Navy ships as described were doing a routine patrol and does not define doing a military drill as announced by the Southern Theater Command. In addition, there was no interference from the Chinese vessels during Sunday's multilateral maritime cooperative activity. The MMCA's exercise areas were off the coast of Buswanga in Palawan and these participating ships also passed along Sabina Shoal and Reed Bank, an area which take part of China's nine dash line claims. According to AFP Chief General Romeo Bronner Jr., while they were conducting their own exercises in the West Philippine Sea, they only monitored the presence of two People's Liberation Army Navy ships and they were not doing any combat patrols or exercises. Chinese Navy ships were freak out and does not even attempt to bother or do anything to block or prevent the joint maritime patrol at the West Philippine Sea. This is far different from their actions in the past, where they water cannon, blocked and harassed the Philippine vessels. The Chinese ships were detected off Buswanga and did not issue any radio challenge. Asked about the distance of the Chinese ships from the vessels participating in the MMCA, the AFP chief said these ships were around 6 nautical miles away, unlike during the rotation and reprovisioning operations for Ayun and Shoal where the China Coast Guard and its maritime militia partners often tried to forcibly block and even at times ram resupply craft and their escorts. And when asked what anti-submarine exercise the participating MMCA ships conducted, Bronner said the operation only involved sensing or detecting the possible presence of undersea vessels or submarines. The AFP chief also emphasized that the multilateral maritime cooperative activity was not a show of force but merely for enhancing the interoperability and enhancing the capabilities of the participating naval forces. The first multilateral maritime cooperative activity carried out by the Philippines, United States, Australia, and Japan in the West Philippine Sea this year was a huge success. They were able to achieve all the objectives that had have been set forth including the anti-submarine warfare exercise that were conducted. Some of the MMCA exercises included communication exercises, division tactics or officer of the watch maneuvers, and a photo exercise. Six warships and four aircraft from the Philippines, Australia, Japan, and the United States conducted a joint patrol in the South China Sea on Sunday following Chinese harassment of Philippine Navy resupply missions in the region. The Armed Forces of the Philippines United States Indo-Pacific Command Australian Defense Force and Japan's Self-Defense Forces successfully conducted the first multilateral maritime cooperative activity in the West Philippine Sea on Sunday using Manila's official designation for sections of the South China Sea. The latest maritime joint patrol not only marks the first combined multinational patrol but also the first time Japanese vessels and aircraft participated. Tokyo and Manila have expanded their defense ties over the last year, most notably through trilateral exchanges with the U.S. and the provision of naval radars to the Philippine Navy via Japan's new military aid program. The drills, which included the Maritime Self-Defense Forces Akabono Destroyer, included a communication exercise, division tactics and a photo exercise. 
These activities were designed to enhance the different FOSS's abilities to work together effectively in maritime scenarios, the statement added. Alongside the number of involved nations, the Joint Patrol also included the most assets to date. Warships included literal combat ship USS Mobile, LCS-26, HMAS Waramunga, FFH-152, JS Akabono, DD-108, BRP Gregorio del Pilar, PS-15, BRP Antonio Luna, FF-151, and BRP Valentin Diaz, PS-177. Shipborne helicopters as well as two P-8 Poseidon aircraft from Australia and the US were also involved. In a joint statement released by defense officials from the four nations, Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin stated that this patrol underscores their shared commitment to ensuring that all countries are free to fly, sail, and operate wherever international law allows. Similar sentiments were communicated by his Australian, Japanese, and Philippine counterparts, with Philippine Secretary of National Defense Gilberto Teodoro emphasizing that these actions show the enduring friendship and partnership among the peace-loving peoples of the Philippines, United States, Australia, and Japan. Japan believes that the issue concerning the South China Sea is directly related to the peace and stability of the region and is a legitimate concern of the international community, including Japan, Australia, the Philippines and the United States, Japanese Defense Minister Minoru Kahara said in Saturday's statement. Japan opposes any unilateral changes to the status quo by force, such attempts as well as any actions that increase tensions in the South China Sea. Japan which deployed the Murasama-class destroyer JS Akabono to the Quad Naval Exercises, said the maritime cooperative activity aims to enhance regional maritime security cooperation among the four countries, and promote freedom of navigation towards the realization of a free and open Indo-Pacific. Philippine Defense Chief Gilberto Teodoro said the exercises would be a step toward enhancing the country's capacity for individual and collective self-defense, and would be part of activities highlighting the enduring friendship and partnership between the four nations. The Armed Forces of the Philippines AFP, hosted on Saturday a pre-sale conference for the Quad Naval Drills, also known as the Inaugural Maritime Cooperative Activity MCA. Key planning members from the AFP, Australian Defense Force, Japan Self-Defense Force, and United States Indo-Pacific Command, convened at the Western Command Headquarters in Puerto Princesa to finalize plans for the activity. The MCA underscores the commitment to uphold international law while promoting peace and stability in the region. The AFP said the MCA, conducted by naval, maritime and air force units in the Philippine Exclusive Economic Zone (EEZ) prioritizes adherence to international and domestic laws, ensuring the safety of navigation and respect for the rights and interests of all states involved. It would also demonstrate the highest standards of professionalism and cooperation among participating forces. Meanwhile, the Chinese military said Sunday that its Southern Theater Command had organized its own drills in the South China Sea conducting a joint maritime and aerial combat patrol in an unspecified area of the waterway. All military activities that disturb the stability of the South China Sea are under control, a statement posted to the Chinese Defense Ministry website, in an apparent jab at the quadrilateral exercises. China has conducted a massive land reclamation project to essentially build and militarize a number of islands in the waters, despite protests from other claimants as well as the United States and Japan. The US and its allies fear that the Chinese held outposts, some of which boast military-grade airfields and advanced weaponry, could be used to restrict free movement in the area. The Asian powerhouse has hardened its position on the waterway in the years following a landmark July 2016 ruling by the Permanent Court of Arbitration in The Hague that invalidated most of its claims there pursuing a more aggressive stance in the waters that employs naval, coast guard and so-called maritime militia ships. Tensions between Manila and Beijing have soared in recent months in the South China Sea, in particular near the 2nd Thomas Shoal. The shoal is home to a Philippine military outpost, 
and the waters nearby have seen clashes between the two sides, including several collisions and the use of powerful water cannons by the China Coast Guard, that have threatened to escalate into a larger crisis, including one that could draw in the U.S., Manila's defense treaty ally. The Philippines has accused China of repeatedly obstructing resupply missions for the BRP Sierra Madre, a Philippine Navy transport ship that was intentionally grounded off the disputed Second Thomas Shoal, known as Rene Zhao in China. Beijing says the Philippine vessels entered its territory illegally. Beijing and Manila have increasingly clashed over their competing claims to the South China Sea. Beijing claims a majority of the strategic waterway, which it delineates with a nine-dash line. As tensions continue to escalate between China and the Philippines over disputed territory in the South China Sea, Manila has devised a different plan to counter China. Interestingly, it centers around Beijing's kryptonite, Taiwan. To strengthen the country's territorial defense, Philippines Defense Secretary directed the military to increase the number of troops stationed at the northernmost island, specifically the remote Batanas Island. During the recent visit to the naval installations, the agency also called for the development of more infrastructure on the island which will be funded by U.S. These include ports that can accommodate large vessels and other facilities to be used during crises, including humanitarian and disaster relief. But here is a catch. The Batanas Islands are located just 200 kilometers or 125 miles from Taiwan, a self-ruled island state that China considers its renegade province and wants to occupy. The announcement made by the Filipino Defense Secretary comes at a time when China and the Philippines have been locking horns in the South China Sea. China has no business, warning the Philippines about its activities in Batanas, the country's northernmost island province closest to Taiwan, when Philippine officials ordered to increase military presence in Batanas as they highlighted its strategic importance for the country. After several months of confrontation at sea and bombast by Chinese authorities, the Philippines is looking to bolster its military capability and strengthen its territorial defenses. The decision to boost troops and expand infrastructure at Batanas Island seems to be a part of that ambitious strategy. The Bashi Channel, which runs between Batanas and Taiwan, is a crucial choke point for ships traveling between the Western Pacific and the disputed South China Sea and is likely to be used by China in case of hostilities. The Philippine Navy opened its naval detachment on Mavulas Island in Batanas in October 2023. This area is also reportedly considered a potential location for the 2024 annual U.S.-Philippines military exercises. In November 2023, the Philippines and the United States started joint patrols on Mavulas Island, located 100 kilometers from Taiwan, and ended in the South China Sea. The United States was also granted access to a tiny island portion of the Philippines in the Cagayan region as part of the Enhanced Defense Cooperation Agreement EDCA. Located just 250 miles or 400 kilometers south of Taiwan, Fuga Island could potentially be used to harass the southern flank in case of a Chinese naval attack on Taiwan. Additionally, it could be used by the United States for launching operations against China as it lies adjacent to two key passages, the Luzon Strait and the Bashi Channel, which provide access to the South China Sea and the Pacific. Reports have indicated that the U.S. may consider building a civilian port on the Batanas Islands. The Batanas region is a cluster of atolls and islets along the strategic Luzon Strait, a maritime passage and a vital conduit for undersea fiber optic cables. Unfortunately, it's also a crossing point for the Chinese Navy when they hold large-scale drills to intimidate Taiwan. In the event of open hostilities between China and Taiwan, there's no doubt large naval forces will either try to travel or even launch combat operations in and around the Luzon Strait. Although the Marcos administration has not explicitly stated how boosting the defense of Batanas will help its security, its National Security Policy 2023-2028, adopted in August 2023, warned that the tensions in the Taiwan Strait could end up affecting the country. The document said in very unambiguous terms that any military conflict in the Taiwan Strait would inevitably affect the Philippines, given the geographic proximity to Taiwan and the presence of 150,000 Filipinos in Taiwan. 
This is also why another regional power, Japan, strengthened defense ties with Taiwan. Japan's geographical closeness to Taiwan is predicted to drag Japan into a cross-strait conflict, which might also see the participation of the United States. The Philippines, Japan, and the U.S. are expected to strengthen their security cooperation during this week's trilateral summit in Washington. Sunday's dueling exercises came days ahead of a state visit to Washington by Prime Minister Fumio Kishida for a meeting with U.S. President Joe Biden followed by the first-ever trilateral summit with the two leaders and the President of the Philippines. At that summit, the three leaders will discuss expanding trilateral cooperation in a number of areas, including in the defense arena, with the trio aiming to build up what Washington calls a collective capacity in the region that also reduces redundancies and improves security coordination.